the bottom of it with your host, Joshua Moriarty. Hola, hello. Welcome to episode 64 of The Bottom of It. Pleasure to have you. Thank you for tuning in. And for any Spanish-speaking listeners, hola a todos, bienvenidos at the bottom of it with me, your host, Joshua Moriarty. Pleasure to have you. Today's guest is Argentinian singer, songwriter, performer, dancer. I'm almost tempted to say exotic olive oil taster, but that's a little too like action Bronson. Um, <laughs> Daniela Spala. Uh, I met Daniela a few years ago now at Corona Capital Festival in Mexico City, where Daniela is based. We met through a mutual friend of ours, Luis Serron. He's looked after Miami Horror a bunch of times and we've been in Mexico City. He's uh, got me some DJ gigs and things like that. He's quite the man about town, an excellent tour guide in Gourmand. He knows his food and his booze. And yeah, Daniela and I headed off. She's extremely charismatic and I think our senses of humor aligned. It was fun cruising around the festival, taking the piss out of a bunch of bands and people while also having a good time and being playful and enjoying ourselves. I actually had no idea she was a successful artist. We were talking about music obviously and she knew her stuff but it wasn't until a few days later when I looked up her records that I saw that she was kind of a big deal in Mexico and in Latin America. Daniela's music is very accomplished it's mature songwriting a lot of great chord movements and arrangements it's got all the things i dig in songwriting and apparently the lyrics are superb too but i have no fucking idea what she is singing about it really bums me out being a single language simon just a simple english speaking fucking idiot i'm only getting half of the picture she is creating we actually talk uh, quite a bit about that on the podcast actually how we as humans think and have emotions in our native language. It's not something I'd ever realize because I don't have the option to think in another language. What else do we talk about in the podcast? We talk about how Daniela started off singing like Mariah Carey and Whitney Houston early on before she found what she now dubs and calls her tiny voice. We talk about Mexican pop hero Luis Miguel. Dance Monkey by Tones and I comes up a few times in conversation. Uh, you can hear my brain stop working every time Daniela says anything in Spanish. It's embarrassing, shameful white privilege stuff. God damn it. I'm sorry, everybody. Uh, anyway, look, enough of that. Let's get into it. Episode 64 with Daniela Spala. Enjoy. What's going on? Haven't seen you in ages. In ages. It's, uh, well, things are, are slowly getting better here. We're, we're in mm. yellow, yellow, like, like the lights. They're treating it as the lights, like red lights, green mm -hmm. lights. Now we're in yellow, which means we're closer to green. That is correct. Yeah. How long were you in red for? In red, um, between December and mid-February. And then it went to orange. Mm -hmm. And then now we're on yellow. Oh, you have orange and yellow. Yeah. Interesting. Yes, because yes, red was like no restaurants, nothing. Okay. And that only happened in December. The president was just ignoring it for a long time. Is that what was going on? Yes. I mean, we were in red uh, like in April, May last year too. Okay. I feel like when I was talking to you about it, you sort of last year, yeah. it seemed like you thought that no one cared. Yeah, no one cared. But then they started to care. Okay. Yeah, in December and January, it got really, the numbers got really crazy. So hospitals were all full. Many people died at home. But now it's fine. Yeah. Now it's nearly fine. <laughs> Whatever. How are you? How are Dude. things over there? Yeah, it's fine back in Melbourne. Yeah. Everything's pretty much normal. Okay. Yeah, we can't leave. I'm supposed to, there's a Miami Horror show. What's the festival in Guadalajara? It's in like, uh, October or November or something. Corona Capital. Hey, it's the same one from where I met you, right? But the Guadalajara version. Yeah. Yeah. I'm supposed to come, but I just don't think I'm going to be able to do it. So when is it? Yeah, October or something like that. Oh, okay. That's cool. I just don't know how I'm, if I'm allowed to even leave Australia and if I do, whether they'll let me come back into the country or not. Why not? Like they're not letting anyone in? 
Mm, I'm not Australian. Mm, okay. So I might not be allowed back because I'm from New Zealand. I got no uh, idea. I'd love to come and visit. Okay. It's been ages. Yeah. It's been a long time. And I, know. I hope October is good here. Yeah. yeah. So you're playing, you got gigs coming up? Yes. This life? Yes. You're rocking on? A couple of gigs. Um, things are starting to open up, you know. Shows are starting to happen. And I have a show on Thursday, but it's okay. it's like uh, people are go with their cars, and then they can stay oh, driving stuff. Yeah, and then they can stay next to the car, their car. Uh, but the the place is huge, and when I last year I went to one as as you know part of the audience. I think I remember, I think I remember you telling me about yeah. this. Yes. And um the place was huge. The stage was very very far from the cars, so very far from the people. And uh yeah, it felt weird. So let's see. It will be my first time doing one. Sounds fun. I got sad watching all of your videos in Mexico City. It made me miss the place. Yeah. I wanted to be there again. It's been too long. Yes, too long. So many videos, Daniela. You feel Thanks. like you've done one for every song forever. It feels like it, but, but I still have songs that don't have videos. Lots of dancing. Yeah, lots of dancing. So much dancing. <laughs> yes. I mean... The, the dancing, it began as uh, well, something that I, I just did, you know, songs. I wanted to dance the songs and I did that. And, and then I realized uh, the people that listened to my music and watched those videos liked that part. So then for, mm. for my, my past album, which was Puro Teatro, which is the, the, the last album that I released. I released yes. it last year. 80s style. Yeah. Um, for me, I, I wanted like most songs on that album, most videos to have a, like a, a choreography part, you know, and that's what I did. So I did City Alejas and then I did uh, Te Veo a la Salida. Both of them ha have choreographies and then Bailando Lentos also has a choreography, but it's like a ballad. Yes, that's the one that's the one with the other person singing with you. Yes. Can you can you say the names of the songs? <laughs> not like you can <laughs> no um no, i feel like i mean it's embarrassing for me to even try <laughs> okay it made me so it makes me sad because i can't understand any mm. of the words that you're saying in any of your songs i'm only getting half the yeah half the message yeah yes you are yeah F the lyrics are are an important part of, of my my project Yes, of course. Yeah. I know. And I'm getting way more um, pedantic and particular about all the music that I listen to these days mm -hmm. about the lyrics. Mm -hmm. If the lyrics are no good, then I don't care. Mm -hmm. But maybe I think your lyrics were horrible, so it's great that I don't know what they are. Exactly. But you've told me you that might. they're actually really good, aren't they? <laughs> well, I told you that? <laughs> in confidence okay <laughs> and now I'm, now i'm just sharing i wouldn't it say it on a no, podcast <laughs> <laughs> but you must spend a lot of time you got to get it right yes i mean i it's something that i pay attention to and that i really work on um you know the past months i've been writing and i'm i'm trying to go somewhere else you know I'm not sure where that new place is, but I'm trying to do something mm. different. And so um, when it comes to lyrics, I usually write two or three lyrics for one song. You know, for, I write a first lyric, then I hate it, and then I write a second lyric. And yeah, each song has... All, all sort of, of, of different concepts or all within the same sort of idea, but just mm. developed further and further. Well, sometimes it's easier to change the whole concept or when, when, when I feel like it doesn't work. Like, like if, if, the, if the feeling is, is missing or if the feeling is just not there ever, or if I'm talking about something that, that ceases to touch me, you know, I just mm -hmm. change, change the whole concept. And if not, 
I, I, I go around the concept, but like from a different angle. I just find the hardest part is actually finding the concept to begin with. Yes. Once I have that, then it's not that tricky to start writing it, but it's actually just getting the definition of what the song is supposed to be about. Yeah, and something that moves you too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And if you leave it too long, if the song takes too long, then you sort of move on mm -hmm. from the emotion and then it sort of doesn't have any yeah. potency for you anymore and you don't care. I was playing a gig the other night mm -hmm. singing a song from a new record of mine that I haven't put out yet, but the song I would have written like two or three years ago and it's a, you know, sad, broken up hearted love song. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even care about the person <laughs> that the song is about anymore at all. Yeah. Well, but and then but you finished it. Singing, yeah, I finished it. Yeah, when it's finished, it's done. Hmm. Yeah, I guess it's a good sort of way of it's like keeping a diary. Yes, and you go back and listen to your albums, and then you're like, oh yeah, okay. I guess I thought that at that point. I don't really anymore. Yeah, that's how it works. Then you know, sometimes if I realized the other day, I was looking to some old pictures. And uh, I was going, I was on my way to the rehearsal and I was looking at some old pictures. And so like the stories of the songs came to life, you know, in those pictures. And okay. it was a good exercise. I got to, I got to the rehearsal and I could, I could feel the songs, you know, more, more vividly after watching all those, looking at all those pictures. It's good. What, rehearsing at La Bestia? Yeah, rehearsing at La Bestia. Sorry. Because I, <laughs> I, do, I do the radio show and I'm like, La Bestia Radio. <laughs> I think I say radio. At least I try and get that That's, correct. Well, but fuck the rest of it. <laughs> La Bestia. That's a huge accomplishment to say. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. I think I just remember the Red Hot Chili Peppers going, give it away now. And I just sort of think about that song. That's sort of my way of, yeah. my way of doing <laughs> it. How the, how the La Bestia crew doing? Oh, they're good. Um, I think there's some new people. Then the guys that were before at like the counter desk. Is that how you say it? Oh, okay, yeah. yes. They, ha yeah. they have a coffee shop around the block. So now... When you have you take a break, you can go for a coffee. I guess for those who don't know, La Bestia. <laughs> can you can you say it say it again for me, please? Bueno, La Bestia is there. We go. A um, is a rehearsing. Um, how do you call it? Yeah, a rehearsal studio. Yeah. But they're quite sort of a, a almost a record label. They're a radio station, party event space. Yes, a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're here in Mexico City, and um, it's it's a very nice place to hang out. Yeah, I really enjoyed my sort of little time there. We did a Miami Horror meet and greet mm -hmm. thing for after, after the Corona Capital, and I think just me and Fran and um, what's the other guy's name? Mario. Mario, see. Si. Mario. Mario. Yeah, we just Ma Ma Mario. <laughs> Super Mario. <laughs> Uh, had a sort of bonding rock and roll session playing each other all sorts of 90s <laughs> music and then they played me all the bands that they were starting to work with or um, who yeah there was some really cool music I just am so bad at remembering the names of anyone I feel like you're the only person who I actually remember from that part of the world Danielle <laughs> okay that's good yeah you and um, Gustavo Cerati okay <laughs> My two, the two Argentinian music heroes. I, I am your music hero too. Yeah, That's sure. Cool. I really like, yeah, it was fun listening, going back through your uh, albums. Excellent songwriting. I mean, again, I'm missing half of the element because I can't understand a word that you're saying uh -huh. apart from the occasional sort of tambien or otra vez or <laughs> something like There's a few of my, oh, I know what that word means. <laughs> yeah, yeah, amor, yeah, got that one. But the chords, all the chord movements and yeah, there's, there's a lot of musical chops in there. Thank where you. Are you. Where were you getting all that from? Did you grow up listening to heaps of different music, playing guitar? I sort of mm. haven't asked you this before. Yeah, yeah I, um, I started playing guitar, uh, like traditional music, like folklore, that's, that stuff. 
you know, that's how I learned. Mm -hmm. Then um, I changed the teacher. I had a new teacher, and so this teacher asked me to bring him songs that I wanted to play, so I would listen to the radio and and uh, Latin hits at that time in the 90s. I would take those songs to the teacher and I would start playing those songs. And then, uh, well, the the rock, which is called Rock Nacional, which is like national rock um, in Argentina, I mm-hmm. that was a huge influence for me when I was when I started playing the piano and I started writing songs. Who are the who are the, some of the artists? Some of the artists are Charlie Garcia and Luis Alberto Espineta, Fito Paez, Andres Calamaro. Uh, mostly when I was when I was uh, learning to play the piano and and I was playing their songs. It was songs by Charlie Garcia and by Fito Paez. Those were like my biggest influences. And they're what like Argentinian artists. What? They're, are they they're local Argentinian artists or just Latin artists? No, local Argentinian artists. Yeah, okay. Yes, yes. And what, lots of, like quite musical, obviously, good chord changes and yeah. well-written yeah. music? It was quite complex. Their music was quite complex, like too many chords sometimes. I mean, they, and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they, they took many things, especially Fito Paez, he took many things from Bossa Nova too. So many of his okay. songs have those kind of chords. Yeah, you've definitely got a lot of very musical chords mm-hmm. in your in your music. Mm-hmm. I was very impressed. I like it. It takes off in different di- directions. What is the uh, Provincia? Is that the song? Yeah, Provincia. That sort of, yeah, and then it sort of moves into that bridge chord change, into that whole other section. And that chorus, just the sort of way the chords lift up and through that part. Yeah. I wrote that song with a friend in Argentina in 2019. Uh, I was there on, on promotion tour. And, um, mm-hmm. and so we got together. We, we didn't know each other. We bar- I mean, we had met the night before through a friend. And, and we, we wrote this song, Provincia. And so all the chords were... On his side, he was playing guitar, and I was singing on okay. top. Yeah. Do you do a lot of that sort of collaborative writing? Mm, well, not so much on on my records. Uh, maybe twenty percent of the songs, thirty percent of the songs have co-writing. But now, um, now I'm I'm collaborating more. I I went through a very difficult period last last year I couldn't couldn't write at all so at one point I said okay I won't I will stop writing songs on my own I'll start sharing the music and see if if I find some kind of excitement there Mm -hmm. so now I'm I'm writing with friends yeah well I guess the tricky thing being a solo artist is is that, isn't it? It's like when you're in a band, there's definitely a bunch of people to be bouncing off and people challenging you and yeah. fighting you on different chords and doing that. But when you're a solo artist, I guess you sort of, it's like you're still in a band kind of, but with lots of different <laughs> people at different points and it's constantly changing. Yes. Yeah. That's kind of it. You, you never wanted to, were you in bands? No, I've never been in bands. At all, no, right. at all. I mean, one in high school, we had a band. It was covers. We played jazz songs, or yeah, I, I don't remember exactly what we played, but um, we we would get together every November because one of the guys in the band was his birthday was on, in November, and so he always wanted to have a band playing, and he wanted to play in that band for his birthday. And uh, so we would get together before his birthday, rehearse some songs, and then we would leave it there and come back the following year. <laughs> <laughs> were you guys any good? No, we weren't good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was thinking about that, actually. There's a friend, a producer that Ben, Miami Horror Ben and I have been working with here mm-hmm. in Melbourne. And his name is Styles Fuego. Styles Fuego. And it's 
Yeah, it's a pretty like urban kind of hip hoppy mm -hmm. name, and I. It's sort of the music that he makes now is a lot further from that name, but I guess he came up with it when he was about 18 or 19 or 20, but now he's my age. He's sort of mid 30s, but he's still called Styles Fuego. And it's like, it's like, <laughs> it's like many people's email address. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, Jay Moriarty, 6'9, hot boy. <laughs> <laughs> at, at, at hotmail or is it hotmail eh? yeah or just like hotmail at hotmail.com <laughs> a way to sort of really prove your masculinity yeah um but yeah i guess you've just been daniela spala the whole time easy i've been daniela spala well i've been the uh how do you say guion bajo like the ah uh, no sé bueno the spala i've been that I, before i have no idea what you're saying okay <laughs> No, no. Let's move on. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it will be too hard for me to explain. We will get stuck. Yeah, that's fine. Man, my Spanish is so bad. It's just getting worse and worse, I guess, because I haven't been anywhere either. I sort of listen to the songs and it just ends up being like, Mucho gusto, vamos a comer. Que marica. Donde este el baño. Sort of... <laughs> what, it, what it's the best I can do. Yeah. So, <laughs> did you ever have you ever sung songs in English? I did. Um when when I started singing it was mostly English. Um I would sing Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, Christina Aguilera. Those those singers oh, wow. were like huge for me. But they've all got giant voices and you've told me that you have a tiny voice. Yeah, but I used to have a big one. Okay. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I, I, I lost it somewhere, somewhere in the process. My big voice, you know, back down. Because I realized okay. I, was, I was making too much of an effort. And, uh, you know, I, I feel more comfortable with, with my tiny voice. I, I, I <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, um, I, 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 I feel like the words that I say come out, um, in in a better way when I'm singing with my tiny voice. Okay. Yeah. I think that's it. I, it that's something that um, the producer that I worked with for the past two albums, which were Camas Separadas and Puro Teatro, he, he mm -hmm. is Adan Jodorowsky, he got me into the tiny voice thing, and it's something that I'm very grateful for. So what he sort of pushed you, like you don't think, feel like maybe before it wasn't your natural voice as much this feels way more you yeah yeah definitely it was i was that making is, an effort yeah that's that that's a quite a common thing i find with a lot of artists even just it takes a, a long time to find what the most comfortable natural place of your voice is and there's so many affectations that people pretend to sing like and they do weird little things with their voice it's like that's not actually who you are exactly. and the sooner you can remove all of that crap from around it the better yeah yeah but it, it does take time yeah a lot of a lot of younger artists like if i do writing sessions with people mm -hmm. i sort of just hear them like you'll be talking to them and they talk one way like oh yeah hey how are you going then suddenly when they start singing like this the whole another thing changes <laughs> like i don't know if that's like what's the big what's the big um you know that dance monkey song have you heard that oh song? yeah yeah, she's got that weird like, like her whole voice sounds so strange. She sounds like a, I don't even know what it is. But it sounds so yeah. so contrived and kind of. And does she does she talk like that? No, I'm sure she just talks like an ordinary Australian. Okay. Like why would she? She sort of sings like she's um, Jamaican or something. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be weird if she talked like that. Yeah, it's a great thing when you. When you hear uh, a singer that you know just from their songs and and then you hear them talk and it's the same voice, I think that's a cool yeah. thing. I mean, that's sort of, I guess someone like Leonard Cohen is <laughs> basically <laughs> just the same same thing the whole time. Yeah. But I guess they're not even really singing. Yeah, it, should, it shouldn't be too much of a huge difference, should it? No. At least, you know, some, some part of the sound, it should be the same. 
Yeah, definitely. So that was the producer. Thanks. What's his name again? Alan Kolorovsky. Yeah. He's got the famous dad. Yeah. What's his dad? He Holy Mountain, right? Yeah, Holy Mountain. El Topo. Is he a weirdo because his dad's a weirdo? He's not a weirdo. He looks like a weirdo, but he's not a weirdo. Are you working with him? Who did the new single? Which is Benema? which one is? Be- oh. Veneno. 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 That. Veneno. Bueno, so Veneno is a cover song. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So you know this band Soy from Mexico? Soy? Soy. Z-O-E. Okay. It's. Oh, uh, yes, yes, I do. I know who that is. They're big. Yeah, they're huge. So um, this song, Veneno, is part of a tribute that, uh, that, that many artists did to them you know oh, okay. so many artists participate in this tribute album and it, did they that was their doing they were uh, they didn't handpick the artists but they were there like they were supervising okay yeah and this song I worked on this song. I worked with a producer from Chile whose name is Pablo Stipisic. Okay, yes, I think I saw that on your Instagram. Mm-hmm. Not to be confused with Pablo Reino. With who? <laughs> Pablo from Reino. No, I, I, I'm not understanding. Who, Christo, who, 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 it's pa- Pablo ah, from... Ah, Pablo from Reino. <laughs> Total. <laughs> Reino, sorry, excuse yeah. me. Okay, no, not Pablo from Reino. Reino, but Pablo, Pablo f- yes. from Reino, um, he played bass on that song. Ah, uh, okay. He's good at playing the bass. I like his bass vibe. Yeah, yes, he's good. He's good. Okay, and, uh, so that's a tribute thing. It sounds great. Do you like it? Yeah, yeah. It's cool. it was it's, It was cool hearing that. I mean, I think just from listening to... Your last two records mm-hmm. and then even hearing that, the sound is just developing more and more and getting, you know, I think the production's getting better for everything that you're doing as well. Oh, thank you. Um, for that song, Veneno, uh, we had been working with Pablo um, mm-hmm. since August last year. And I would send him demos and he would, uh, he would send me those demos with some production. You know, he would work and then he would send them back to me. And we did that like as an exercise. And on Veneno is the first song that we formally work together. He, him as a producer. And, and But did you get to go back to that part of the world and or it was all no, online? It was online. I went, I did go back to Argentina in December. Okay. But... No, not to Chile. We did it online. Wow. That's yeah. impressive. I, I go crazy doing it all online. I guess you sort of have to sometimes, but I just, my patience for writing emails to people with mixed <laughs> notes of like, oh, turn the tambourine <laughs> yeah. up 2DB. Can we just pan the vocal? This? Like I just, I can't be bothered anymore. Yeah. It's, it, it can get frustrating too because especially for me, I don't have that much of a vocabulary, musical vocabulary. Okay. So I, I don't know uh, how to say precise notes, how to send precise yep. notes, you know? So, yeah, doing it online makes it harder. But with Pablo, it, was, it, was, it worked. Yeah. Do you think he understood you better with the language that you were using? Do you do you find that a problem with some people just aren't able to? Because I've I've found that with others, mm. you know, particular people I've worked with over the years who maybe haven't had the vocabulary, but after a certain amount of time, you just start to. I think also I think there's a lot of like definitely male ego that's been involved in oh, sure. this part of the <laughs> where they're like. If it's a female artist or maybe not necessarily just a female artist, but if someone doesn't know the language, people in their production, when they're sitting in the hot seat, they're just like, well, fuck you. I'll just, I'm in charge here because you yeah. can't, if you don't know the way to express yourself. Yes. No, fortunately, 
I've worked with very patient people. And Pablo was very patient. Adán has always been patient. Then for my first record, I worked with a producer called Rafa Arcaute. He's from Argentina. And he was also very patient. So, um, uh, yeah, w I mean, with the years, I can know, I, I know I have some vocabulary, but not like all the vocabulary that I need. That's fine, though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I find words that define what I want and, and that will help people understand. Are you playing, were you playing shows do you play all over Latin America or is it like Mexico is sort of the main, that's your home base now, right? It's my home base. And we had a whole plan uh, to go play gigs in Latin America, like in South America before the mm -hmm. pandemic. But then, well. Have you done many, like other, that was going to be the first time you've done it or you've played a handful of shows? Well, in, two, in 2019, I went to uh, Colombia, Chile and Argentina and we played small showcases. And uh, the response from people was very, very good. So, so it, it was time for us to start doing our own shows, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but well, it was, when are you it was be put back? on hold. I hope next year. I hope next year. Yeah. Um, Argentina was having shows uh, during the summer. Summer is the mm -hmm. same summer as your summer which is like yes. December, January. They were having shows and now they're all n not locked in, but they're all, they don't have shows anymore because it's winter and, you know, numbers are going up. Is there a sort of, has there been any, I'm trying to think if there's any, you know, Spanish language music that's sort of crossed over into English speaking mm. culture. It's, it's just a, such a difficult... It sort of always works the other way, but it doesn't kind of go back that way, does it? Well, like English music... Pull it. But like right now with reggaeton, J Balvin yes. and Bad Bunny, they're, they have made the crossover. Or do you remember... I, something... A ver, I, do you remember Juanes? Tengo la camisa negra porque te, negra tengo el alma. Um, do you remember that? Bueno... <laughs> Juanes is a <laughs> maybe. I'm not Explain gonna sing it. Again. Okay, so Juanes is a Colombian artist, a very mm -hmm. famous Colombian artist, um, who once had this song called La Camisa Negra, the black shirt. And okay. and it became huge. And I remember being in Amsterdam and they were playing that song. Yes, yeah, so there's there's been a few. Yes. Over the years. But it's like just English English speaking people are just I mean look I'm a fucking completely ignorant English speaking idiot <laughs> and we just it's like we don't I don't know we don't I, I, I don't know how how is it that we've gotten away with it for so long being English speakers that we haven't had to really learn well another language it's not fair but the interesting thing is that now many English speaking artists are trying to sing in, in Spanish yeah, Just, I saw the Black Eyed Peas like whole new record. They were trying to oh. definitely cross over into that market. Yeah, and also Justin Bieber when he did Despacito. Well, Despacito That's was right. a huge it was a huge song like globally. Yes. Um, then Selena Gomez has released. I think it's an EP in Spanish. It definitely seems like it's starting to happen a lot. Yeah. More and and Spanish, the language of choice for sure, more than any sort of other one. Yes. Was there many? Is there any bands that have that are native Spanish speakers that have been singing in English? Like I think of Phoenix and oh. Daft Punk and those those oh. French acts that would just actually sing their songs in English and then have managed to. But I imagine they probably get mm. um, crit criticized a lot for it. Is yes. there sort of that sort of stigma? Oh, yeah, 100%. There's a band here called Rey Pila. They, they sing in English. All their lyrics are in English. 
Yeah. And and what what's the sort of consensus? Well, I mean, I I guess some people ask why are they I mean, they still get asked why they still why they sing in English and it's like they have I don't know how many records. It's the music that they want to make. Yeah, it is a funny one cuz I guess I think of the bands that it's worked for and it's given them global access, like a band like Phoenix, for mm -hmm. example. But if, if, you, if it hasn't actually worked, so that band that you mentioned, I mean, I'm not sure that it's sort of got them global fame, has it? So it might sometimes start to be like, oh, why do we actually do this? I mean, I think it's, I think, um, it's hard when you do it for commercial purposes. Mm-hmm. You know, because, um, and, and it's very evident when they do it for commercial purposes. But then there are people, and I think it's the case of Repila, that they do it just because that's the music that they, that they like, you know, as a the music they listen to. And that's what they want to yeah. do and what they want to sing. Yeah, I mean, in that respect, it totally makes sense i guess mm. that's even like people do that with the genre that they choose to play their music in yeah you know there's i mean some like a reggae band from australia where it's like ah, maybe there's not a huge reggae culture here but they'll still play that music and sing in a sort of ruster voice like okay i guess if that's <laughs> what you want to do then 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 that is fine would you i guess you'd feel restricted wouldn't you singing in english would you like feel like you had the vocabulary to do it mm, i don't know would it feel would it feel clunky i think it wouldn't feel very original like i found yeah. i found my voice singing in spanish and i've i've done uh, a lot of work there you know i've, I've, I've you know already um yeah the process has been long you know, many years finding my voice. Uh, I think that if I sing in English, I'm not sure if I'll have my voice. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when I when I started writing, I wrote songs in English. I wrote both in interesting. Yeah, some songs were in English, some songs were in Spanish, and uh, no, then I realized that. When all my emotions, when I was living, you know, not in the songs, like my normal life, all my emotions were transmitted in Spanish, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was the, the language that I had to sing in. It's that, that is the funniest thing about it for me. It's like you, your brain or your existence lives inside of one language, usually, right? Yeah. Yes. Do you do you still feel like? But when you're speaking English, you're not translating. You can just naturally speak it without thinking too much about it. Yes. Yes. Most most of the words that I say are without yeah. translating. But your you, but your your emotions and your existence and everything else is in Spanish. That's yeah. just such a crazy concept to think that as human beings you actually that that is how you grow up. Like, we, I mean, we all share the same emotions and the same thoughts and feelings, but they ac actually are rooted in whatever language it is that you've been taught. Yes. Yes. Maybe, you know, this thing about neurolinguistica, I don't know how it's in English. It's got to do that with may, the language sounds, and the... And that was one thing you said in Spanish that I actually have understood. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Great. Uh, so, it um, you know, and when you say something, and and that thing has already some power, and and it can affect how you feel, how you think. So, I think that singing in the language that you feel um, is very connected to that, too. Fascinating. I guess. I've only got one to choose from. I got, I got no other, no other language. I mean, growing up in New Zealand, what were our options? We had Japanese class. Really? Um, yeah, we had French, but Mr. Maness, the French teacher, hated my brother, my mm -hmm. older brother. <laughs> so then, when I came through a few years later, he hated me okay. as well. 
And I, me and my brother equally hated him back. And I'd sort of inherited my brother's hatred. So that <laughs> French was gone. There was no option to learn Spanish at all. Yeah. It was You're- sort of Japanese and French at my high school. And then I guess just you, even the existence of the Spanish language was just, it's like not in your, in your realm yeah. at all growing up in New Zealand. You're so sort of far removed from it. If someone had told me that I'd ended up you know, playing in those countries or you'd be making friends in those places, then it probably would have been a lot more inspiration to yes. learn it. But And then as I've gotten older, you guys speak English so well that I'm just, I feel like a clown. So I just don't bother. Well, you know, I think, uh, well, English has made its way, you know, all over the world. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, it's, yeah, the culture, like, the music, we all know music in English. Films, then series, everything is in English. Yeah, it's true. I'm lucky. Don't. But it's also, Don't you watch uh, Luis Miguel? The so we talked on about Netflix? this. We did. No. So it's on. Is it on Netflix? Is it in? I wonder if it's on the Netflix Australia. Because huh. we, we talked about this when we were hanging out. That was the sort of hot topic of TV conversation <laughs> yeah. when I was in Mexico was the Luis Miguel TV show. Yes. So he, he would, that was inspiration for your, for Puro Teatro, is that right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, especially for this song, uh, Te veo la salida, see you at the exit. That's the okay. translation. So for that song, Te veo la salida, um, when I recorded the demo, I... I let it play and then I went around the house and it reminded me of Luis Miguel and the, the early years, you know, the, the early records when he was a teenager. So can you, for, for the listener, tell us a little yeah. more about Luis Miguel? Okay. So Luis Miguel is this huge, huge, huge Mexican artist, uh, singer, um, who was... He started very young. He started when he was 12. Right. And, and he became very, very big, like in all Latin America. And uh, yes, that's, now there's a, a Netflix show. About and this him. was what well, is it? He what, what would have started in the 70s, maybe, but 80s was his prime. I think it started. Yeah, late 70s and in the 80s, he was a teenager. And then in the 90s, he started singing. In the 90s, he was huge and and, uh, he started singing boleros. He did two albums singing songs from Manzanero, Armando Manzanero. And uh, those albums are so good. And I remember my friends at school would listen to those records. I wasn't very much into his music back then but my friends were and so we would have pajama parties and (laughs) is that how you call them back then yeah yeah that's it okay so we would have that and uh, my friends would listen to those albums so i know those albums we would spend the whole night listening to them and it's sort of what like sinks into and then but so then you've went back and revisit it recently sort of got back into his albums a lot more yes and it's it's amazing how even without listening to the records before you know all the songs yeah sure yeah i guess it's like that with those artists where they've just been yes yeah they were just always there and you didn't even you sort of get it through osmosis just being young it just was like it's in your body yeah yeah, it's happened to me with many artists. And did he go crazy? Um, yes. <laughs> Short answer, yes. <laughs> what? Cocaine, yeah. women, booze, gambling? Yeah, he was with Mariah Carey for a while. R- really? Yeah. They were she, loves, she loves fucked up dudes. That's her whole thing. <laughs> she, she loves weird men. Who was she, was she with? with the, she was with Tommy Motola. No? Who's that again? The the owner the, the the president of Sony Music. Yeah, okay. And then James Packer, like another he's I like a 
I think it's an Australian family, like one of the richest families in the world sort of thing. And he's just like a meathead, like got a giant face that looks like a piece of steak. Okay. <laughs> and I don't think he's a very nice man at all. Okay. Um, she picks weirdos. Does she marry them or she just sort of dates them for a while? I don't know that much. About yeah, her I don't life. know much either. No. There was a book uh, for Christmas. We had a... Um, Secret Santa sort of thing where everyone has to buy each other a, a different present, but then you can steal them off each other. I forget what it's called. Bad Santa, maybe. <laughs> and someone had bought, um, it was called Mariah on Mariah. And no. it was just Maria. <laughs> it was just her <laughs> autobiography. And it just the amount of times she mentioned the word Mariah Carey and just, she's obviously like kind of pretty egomaniacal. But hey, that's what gets you to the top, right? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So then how, how um, egomaniacal are you, Daniela? Uh, What's your drive like? Are you going to be the biggest? You've got to be the best. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I, I think I'm not that... What's the word? Egomaniacal? Ego. ego. E yeah, ego, egomaniacal. Okay. Egomaniac. But, egomaniac. But, but I think I'm not. But then, you know, sometimes I realize that I talk about myself uh, a lot. And, and I don't mm -hmm. ask the other person about <laughs> himself or herself. When did you figure this out? Did your therapist tell you? No. Uh, a, a boy that I was dating when I right. was like 19. Yeah. Have you gotten better? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> at, least now, at least now I'm aware. That's a great start. So at some point in the conversation, I'll, I'll be like, hmm, maybe I'm talking too much about myself. Well, we're here to talk about you. I asked you onto the <laughs> podcast to do this, so that is fine. But yeah, it, it is, that is a, a pitfall of being a, well, an artist in general, but I think especially an artist where you're solo and it's your name mm -hmm. that, you know, everyone yells and says all the time and you're the front, you're the, in every picture you're in, every film clip, you've got to be on top of everything. It's hard to not go a little, to, be, to become like that. It, yeah. It's sort of, I don't know how you can avoid it. Yes, you, you get used to, I guess you get used to a certain amount of attention being drawn mm -hmm. to yourself all the time. Um, with the pandemic though, I think I have been away from that attention, you know. And are, you, are you craving it? <laughs> you need it back. I, I think I do. I think <laughs> I do. Yeah. But I, I'm not going to look for it like on TikTok. Okay. You draw the line at TikTok. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to post some things on TikTok, but not, not the kind of things that try to... I don't know, to many people went out, not, not just on TikTok, like everywhere, every uh, social, yeah, on social media in general. It was, it was very evident um, when, when we all got locked in, how people started to go on social media and try to show what, what they were mm -hmm. doing, you know? It was almost mandatory. You had to be there. You had to show what you were doing for people not to forget about you. I think when we were hanging out in Mexico, I, I remember we were having dinner and you had to film yourself just saying, hey, my new single's coming out tomorrow or whatever. Yeah, I remember. And I was, I was sort of impressed, impressed by the way that you just did it. But with, like, I get really... <sighs> Oh, I don't know if I should be doing this. Do I feel silly? Like, am I? And you just were like, I oh, just, just fucking do it. You just mm -hmm. did it quickly. It was done. And I was like, okay, maybe you don't have to th overthink. Yes. You don't have to overthink it and think that you're being an, um, drawing too much attention to yourself or whatever. You can just do it, and it's just fine. Yeah. 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 We were, I think we were you had in, a good handle on it. I think we were in. I think it was. I don't know. Some place in La Juarez. I remember where the, I don't remember the name of anywhere that we went. Oh. But I remember what everything looks yeah. like. <laughs> yeah. But you tell me and it just doesn't 
when people say things to me in Spanish, unless I see it written down, mm -hmm. the, the, the sound of it doesn't, doesn't register because it's just too quick. And yes. I don't know what it is that I'm, that I'm needing to be actually focusing on. Yeah. So you're looking forward to getting back out there anyway. Pandemic's <sighs> over. Yes. Get your, the limelight back on you. Yes. Feed the beast. <laughs> yeah. I mean, especially live shows. That's, that's what we all miss the most. Well, do you miss live shows? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've been playing some with my new band, Telenova. I've been doing a few things solo, just playing piano and singing. Mm -hmm. And I think more so than sort of craving like attention on yourself, it's just really joyful to play. Like I really love the process of playing music and sharing it with people. So I think that is, yeah, I miss it a lot as well. I, yeah. I kind of want to be doing more of that too. Yes. And touring, I'm I'm very excited that now, you know, I'm I'm getting on a plane to go somewhere else to play. I mean, it's Mexicali. It's like two hours uh, on the plane. It's Mexico, but I'm really excited. You know? Yeah, I think it's it's just nice to see your friends in all those different places as yes. well. I guess we've sort of been stuck to just yeah, a little FaceTime here and there with people on the other side of the world, but just not getting to actually see all of your other friends and experience those other cultures and places, different food, different everything that you get from that we're lucky enough to get from being artists and getting to travel. Yes, yes. And um, and then I, I wouldn't... Um, <laughs> now I'm stuck. I'm trying to translate. Like, <laughs> Take your time. It's okay. I never thought I was going to miss uh people screaming at the show not not screaming but like clapping you know after a song i miss that of course i miss uh i think i got some kind of validation from that you know and my you definitely music did. got validated <laughs> and and it's been a year and a half so that's an interesting one like you don't feel that that because you know your your videos have millions of views and i guess you get lots of instagram likes and follows and all of that but it doesn't mm. feel the same for you not getting it personally so you know not at all not at all uh for me those are just numbers and uh numbers are so uh, relative because uh -huh. then you have uh bad bunny millions of numbers tens of millions yes, of yes, numbers yes. more than you so then you say well, well do they mean something do my numbers mean something but then when you when you have the actual people screaming and singing your songs it means the world yeah, yeah. it's a whole different experience it's yes. actually it's it's palpable it's there yes but yeah just going on to spotify and seeing what your monthly your monthly <laughs> stream so you have no idea like how it's connecting, how your music is connecting with anybody. It's true. It's not really until you are actually playing a, yes. playing a show that you get to see it. Yeah. It, it's hard to imagine a person behind a number. To me, it's yes. hard to imagine. Uh, I know exactly what you mean. Hey, a question I always ask everyone on this podcast, what is a song um, that you could happily never hear ever again? Not a song that you've written, but a song by someone else. Hi. Who drives you mad? Who do you hate? Who are you sick of? Oof. I don't know. Where do know. you begin? Hmm. I don't know. I think... Do you find yourself at the bar or the cafe or the supermarket and just like pointing at whoever you're with like, oh, for fuck's sake, not this song again? <laughs> no, a ver, poof. I, no sé. I mean, there you're are songs. A I'm not a you're hater. You're not a hater? No, I'm not that much of a hater. But maybe, um, well, the, the tones and I? Yeah. 
<laughs> that song was hard for me when it came out, and yeah, and, and as it got hard. more and more played, yeah, it got even harder. Yeah, I never needed to hear that from the beginning either, let alone hear it again. Hmm. But um, always congratulations to those people for having such a big song. Hits. No, it's no no attack at the artist. It's just like oh that. Congratulations to the artist. However, I think that is a horrible piece of art. <laughs> <laughs> but good on them. Doesn't mean that we can't be friends or that you can't like, you're not going to be mean to that person. No, you just don't, of course. don't appreciate what it is that we do. Uh, another question I ask is, do you think that the planet is about to implode or are we going to make it through to the other side? No, I think we're going to make it through. Okay. Yeah. Are you always optimistic? Uh, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure where I sit. I think. Yeah, <laughs> I what think. about you? Do you think mm, it's imploding? I don't know. I don't... Um, oh, yeah, it's imploding. But it's always been imploding. And we've always survived. I don't, you know, people sort of think that it's worse now than it probably ever has been, but I imagine it's probably the same as it's always been. We can just see more of it. Exactly. Yes. The the thing that it, that is fascinating to me is it the social media element of of reality or life, and just seeing how much people are sort of how much people share and how much validation everyone is wanting like everywhere regardless of artists it's just actually every single human being is sort of craving this validation and oversharing and needing to be liked and needing to be wanted and yes. that's sort of i guess that was maybe always there in humans but seeing it be um, revealed so openly it's sort of i, I don't know where that like yes where I that leads to I have this dream of, of this social media thing imploding. You know, that would be amazing. But I don't know if it's going to implode. No, I don't know either. I'm not that optimistic. I, do you, does your management and everyone tell you that you've got to be posting more and getting more of your, like are they on your case to be doing that or it's something you've just chosen to do yourself? Because I know that, you know, when we've, sp we've spoken in the past, you've, yes. when you've been wanting to actually just find time to be writing a new record or working on your music, you're hmm. getting a lot of pressure to be actually keeping that side of your business going, which, which can kind of get in the way of the actual art side, right? Yes, it can get in the way. But um, my, my management, they know that maybe they, they can ask things uh, for me to do but then it's not the same when I want to do them that's when they get done and mm -hmm. and I know that um, I, I can't be outside I, I can't be just away from social media so now I'm I'm working on plans that I make by myself with things that I that I think are genuine to me you know, things that I really want to do. Like if I'm going to do something in front of a camera, well, it, it, it better be something that I'm comfortable with. And, you know, trying also to see what people like about me, which is my music. Mm -hmm. So I feel comfortable playing a song on my piano and recording that and posting that. I don't feel comfortable dancing in front of a camera. I mean, f yes, for my videos, but not for social not media. Not TikTok style. Yeah. No. Yeah, I, th I think I've definitely found that, yeah, when that little bit of time we spent just hanging out in Mexico, it was, it made me feel better about, like, oh, you can actually post things and it doesn't, you don't have to feel <laughs> so self-conscious about it. There's a way to actually do it just confidently. Yes. I like that. Thank you for that. I needed it at the time. Cool. And now with the filters, it's a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. You don't even have to wear makeup. There. Oh, yeah. I wasn't too worried about that. I've got a beard anyway. That's man makeup. <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, thank you. Daniela, it's always a pleasure to catch up with her. I really enjoy her insights and she cracks me up. It's been great getting to know her over the last few years. Now, I've put some links to some Daniela stuff in the podcast description, but I would recommend checking out her latest record, Puro Teatro, which translates to mere theatre or pure theatre. I really dig it. A couple of my fave tracks are Mi Boy and Provincia. The record before Puro Teatro, uh, Como Separadas. Fuck, man. I think I'm doing my best here, okay, guys? <laughs> that record is top notch, too. She is, yeah, it's excellent. I really like what she's doing. Plenty more to come in the future from Daniela, I'm sure, also. Very good, so check it out. Hey, all right, that's it for episode 64. Thanks for tuning in. Pleasure to have you. More coming soon, as always. Until then, stay safe, be good. See ya.